here we go. Stefan share his screen for a uh, previous question that was uh, addressed in the Meet Our Contributors. The individual wanted a little bit of a sort of a quick code base tour, if you will, of the uh, directory structure and things like that. Yeah, right. so I, I won't talk about all of those directories. There are like 20 here. Um, I pick a few. Um, yeah, let's start maybe with this package PKG. That's the main package where all, not all, but um, traditionally there was all code of Kubernetes. Basically everything which uh, made the Kubernetes project was here. Nowadays we've moved out a lot. You will see in a second uh, where other things are today. Um, but here you still find a lot of things. So for example, if I go here into package controller, you will find a whole list of controllers. Controllers might be a term for you, controllers are operators, and those are those for, for Kubernetes resources. For example, you find all the replica set logic here or deployment logic. So for the, um, the resources you know from Kubernetes, um, all the business logic behind the scenes, everything that the controller manager is doing, this is here in this directory, like 30, 40, different controllers. Um, I don't go into the details here, but uh, those are really interesting if you want to learn from code. Just look into replica set, for example, and, and see how replica sets, the logic of replica set is implemented in Kubernetes. Um, I talked about owner files. So here's one of those owner files, um, just owners in plural, capital case, and you see we have four um, approvers and one reviewer. And this owner file um, is valid for all subdirectories under controllers if there is no other owner file which uh, replaces this one. So those four people can approve your changes in controllers. That's what it means. And David, Dietz, my colleague, he, he wants to review your changes if you change something, um, yeah, for example, here in replica set. Uh, maybe there's another, another owner file which replaces um, the higher level one. They are different people. So they're just three um, approvers and for people who want to review changes in here. Um, controllers, as I said, very important, quite a lot of code. Um, we have APIs spread around. So here's something called APIs. I will not talk much about that because there's a better place to look for that. Um, but you find all APIs here, but no, not those APIs which you actually use. So um, I don't want to dive too much into this package structure. Um, it's pretty huge. I go back to the top level and um, show where the other code is. So package, there is a lot of code. We have CMD, which are the commands. So if you go into CMD, of course, you find things like Hypercube. So if you have started a, a cluster yourself, you have probably used Hypercube before. Um, everybody has used Cube Control. So Cube Control is a top level file for, for the command Cube Control. So there's probably a main function, not much more. And all those binaries you find here. So it's pretty easy to get an entry point um, if you look for, for how something works uh, in Kubernetes. So CMD and package we have. Um, this hack directory, hack is a bunch of scripts, um, scripts you have to use um, if you want to do changes. For example, when you change something quite often, um, you have to update something. You have to update generated code and here you find all those update scripts. Um, there's an update all, you can run that, takes like 40 minutes or so, and then everything is updated, takes long, it works, yes, but usually, so I never call that. Um, I usually see from, from CI, which is running against my PRs, um, what must be changed or must be updated, and then I run the right script. So here's a, a bunch of, I know, 30 different update scripts. For example, um, if there's code gen uh, involved, so you change something and there, there must be a change in a client or in some API code or the copy code, this is a, a, a file to call. Um, for a newbie, of course, if you're new in this code base, it's hard to really tell which one must be one. So maybe it's easier to run just update all after you notice that your PR is not green because something is missing. So update all is a very important one. And there are a couple of test scripts here, how to run test uh, for integration or just go test, unit tests. Um, all of those are documented as well. So if you look for those scripts uh, here in the repository, you also find some documentation. Um, last but not least, there is a staging directory. So um, if you have programmed anything in Kubernetes, you probably know a couple of those sub um, projects. So client go uh, is a very prominent one. Uh, it's our client basically. Um, the API one here, Kate, S API, 
Um, it includes all APIs we expose, which can be used by third parties. Um, those repositories, they are inside of our main repository. So if I dive into the staging here, staging source, KLS, IO, you find all the source code. So you, for example, you find the client go source code and you can change it. Um, this, um, so if you want to change something, do it here in the staging. Um, those directories, all, all those directories under staging, they're exported um, to the real directories under GitHub. So I hope you can see that. If I go here into Kubernetes client go, um, this is what you use in Go code if you program uh, against our API. Um, it's just a copy of what you find, what you find inside of the staging. So staging is a, the, the prime instance of the source code. So if you change something, do it here. But if you if you consume our uh, our repositories, do it in the in the actual published repository. So uh, under GitHub Kubernetes client go. Um, as I said, there are a couple of them. Some of them you see here. There's API machine we usually use. Um, there's API server if you program an API server. Um, those are very important. A lot of them are libraries, so they're very core in Kubernetes, uh, very internal. Um, um, yeah, just both to them. Uh, we don't have enough time to really talk to them here. Um, take a look, browse the code. In general, um, this is, yeah, it's one suggestion. Um, Kubernetes is huge, so the code base is really huge. Um, try to get ready some kind of debugger, some IDE like VS Code or like Goland. Try to get um, a debugger working. This helps a lot to really um, trace when something happens, where it happens. Um, yeah, it's a, I think it's a very important thing to really find your way through this code base. Um, don't be afraid. It's big. It takes time. It takes time for everybody to really find the way through it. Um, yeah, maybe uh, the last thing I want to mention, we have plenty of um, those other tests which are run in CI uh, against your, uh, your pull request. Um, we have many unit tests, of course. Unit tests, as, as usual in Go, they are just files inside of the packages. And then we have, in addition, um, something that's also an acronym, of course, we use end-to-end. -end. So it's end-to-end um, -end tests are those which are running against the real cluster. So um, I know I just pick one here, storage, you find everything about storage. So for example, um, what do we have here? If you want to use NFS, um, here are complete end-to-end -end tests running against a, a real complete Kubernetes in a real deployment on GCE, on AWS, or something like that. Um, next to end-to-end -to -end tests, we have integration tests. So there's one directory um, under tests, it's called integration. Um, they are more than unit tests, but they are not running a, uh, against a complete cluster. So they are kind of artificial. Um, sometimes they use an API server, but they don't use pods. They don't use containers at all. So they are a level between unit tests and end-to-end -end tests. And you see they are nicely um, sorted um, according to some topics. So if you, I know you want to change something in the quota handling, uh, there are good chances that there's a quota directory here and for quota, this is the case. So here are quota tests, for example. Um, depending on the topic you are working on, just look uh, in this directory if there is something, often there is. Anything else? Um, yeah, I think this is a, it's a good overview. There's much more about it. Um, take your time, browse code, use the debugger to really see what is going on in, uh, in the real process. That's maybe the best tip I have here. That was an awesome tip and awesome tour, by the way. That, so this was our first impromptu tour on Meet Our Contributors. <laughs> So thank you so much for doing that. Uh, and for those listening, we are more than welcome to do things like that in the future. If you just give us a uh, 24 plus hour lead time, we can make sure folks uh, like Steph and Joel, uh, Eeyore are on the line to, uh, to best answer those. Thank you again for that. All right, I have more questions than we have time for, so I'm going to do those in the order that they came in. Um, let's see. Oh, Nikita has a question and meet our contributors. Uh, what are your suggestions for reviewers? Uh, how does one become a good reviewer? Um, 
and also she said etc but i know some other folks in the channel were also talking about um how even members uh, which is the first rung on our ladder can review so what's the point of an owner's file as a reviewer so that's a a multi multi-prong question there um anybody want to take that Stephan, I know you have made your way up the ranks. Uh, what is your what is your opinions on what makes a good reviewer? Um, so reviewers say make sure that the quality of code is on the uh, on the right level. Like they really go every little change you do, every line usually you do. Um, they might look picky sometimes or pedantic, um, but this is important somehow because uh, if everybody follows any kind of style without any uniformity, um, the whole project gets harder to maintain. So there's a reason for that. Um, reviewers usually say, so yeah, they want to improve code. Um, sometimes it's about taste, this can happen, um, but they, they have very positive intentions usually. So um, it's fine to discuss things or to say, uh, well, um, this is maybe not my opinion or it's a different style, that's all fine. Um, but they have good intentions to improve code. And this brings me to um, maybe the second part of the question, uh, how to get a reviewer. Um, I had a recent uh, case where what somebody wanted to review code in API server and he just uh, created a PR and put himself into the reviewer file and his owner's file of the API server. And of course this didn't have success because we didn't know this uh, person. Um, this is not necessary, but um, the best uh, way to become a reviewer, an official reviewer, whatever this means, um, just start reviewing. Um, look in, uh, in some component you, you care about, you really, really deeply care about, and just start reviewing any kind of PR. Um, everybody is happy about reviews. Um, that's very important. Everybody is happy about reviews. Um, the worst thing for contributors is um, they contribute something, they push something, a PR, and nobody cares. So a few review, that's already the first step and it's um, very good for the people who contribute code. And don't be frightened if um, the person who, who pushes something is a well-known person in the project. Um, yeah, do your best, give your review. If you see something, start with things which are maybe not so deep, um, just apply your knowledge. Um, if you think this is not good style and go, comment on it. Um, and get known in this component. That's as easy. If you have done 10 reviews or 20 reviews in this component, and then you make a PR against the owner file, um, everybody will agree because everybody is happy to get more reviewers. Reviewers are good for the project. They increase velocity and they make the life of everybody contributing better, basically. Um, approver is the next step. So if you want to be owner and approver, um, this means you must be reviewer for at least a few months and you must be well known and accepted to be some kind of instance as a reviewer for this component. Um, but this is the same way, just do reviews, uh, uh, yeah, very many reviews, good quality, proof that you know the code, that you give value back as a reviewer, and then you can become approver. That's the same, same way it works. Um, 